try to take a different perspective on it, actually. Uh, it, it's most of a myth that uh, working as a woman, working women in the Arab world, it doesn't have the respect uh, of, of the people and, and the culture. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not. I can tell you that because I've worked with women. I see women working in our area, whether in Jordan or Lebanon, Syria, Egypt, or all these places. I think the biggest issue was, um, you know, how do we, because like it or not, the woman in the Arab world, from a cultural point of view or not, if she works, she's still expected to do the job at home. And that's, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe in the US uh, there is more tolerance of a man doing something at home or whatever. In the Arab world, I'll tell you, it's a taboo, big taboo. And, He'd rather be dead than be seen we, we cooking wash, in the kitchen. We will not wash the dishes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why we go and buy dishwasher, <laughs> you know. But uh, I think the biggest enabler to women empowerment in the workforce is really having policies that makes the working environment friendly and adaptive. And, uh, you know, when we start that, it's amazing, you know, how many people will come uh, and, and work, women specifically. In Saudi Arabia, um, also a... There isn't a law that says women cannot work, right? There isn't, but there are a lot of things and taboos put around it that makes it very difficult. So what we did, actually, we've studied what are these taboos, and we provided and solved them. And right now, we have more than 40 women working in our company in Saudi Arabia. They wanted to have a separate entrance. They wanted to have a special room where they cannot uh, mingle with men and whatever. It's fine. We can do that and still have a productive session and have a productive, uh, uh, you know, executive working. And once we did that, a lot of companies actually saw that example and started following and doing, uh, and, and doing more of it. We